before I start my discussion of the assignment proper, uh, I would like to state, state an observation that I have made, which I believe I have addressed several times before already. Okay, but students are still making this mistake. So, uh, I saw a lot of cases where students are writing things like this, for example. Okay, or you say something like a point, then you follow this phrase with a vector. Okay, uh, I don't know, maybe 1, 2, 0. Okay, lies on L1. Okay, so some examples. Okay, so uh, I believe we have discussed this before, right? A vector cannot be used to represent a point. Okay, I repeat, a vector cannot be used to represent a point. Okay, so if you want to say that, uh, or if you want to use the vector 4, negative 1, negative 3 to represent a point E, then please write it as the vector, the position vector of E. In other words, OE is equals to 4, negative 1, negative 3. Alright, the alternative, okay, is to say that E is the point 4, negative 1, negative 3 in coordinates form. Okay, so from now on, okay, I do not want to see any more students, okay, mistreating the notation for coordinates and for vectors. Okay, I hope I have made this very clear. Alright. Okay, let's look at question 1. Okay, so in question 1, you are given that P1 and P2 are two parallel planes that are both perpendicular to a unit vector N. Okay, so one word we would like to note here, okay, is the phrase unit vector, okay, which tells us that N has a magnitude of 1. Okay, now it is given that point A with position vector A lies on P1 and point B with position vector small b lies on P2. Okay, and we are asked to write down the shortest distance between the planes P1 and P2 in terms of A, B, and N. Okay, so uh, I think many of you uh, are able to at least formulate the correct expression. Okay, the problem here is more of simplification. Okay, so let's draw the two planes. Okay, so here I'm going to use the side view. Okay, so we see that uh, with a normal vector here, okay, that would be perpendicular to both planes. Okay, so how do we find the shortest distance between the two planes? Okay, what we can do is we just make use of the points A and B given to us. Okay, and then we see that the shortest distance between P1 and P2 all right, will be equals to uh, the length of projection of the vector AB okay, onto the unit vector of N. Okay, so uh, AB, right, is B minus A. Okay, so some of you left your answer as such. Okay, or perhaps you would have gone one step further to say that this is equals to B minus A dot N, okay, modulus over the magnitude of N. Okay, but neither of these forms are considered simplified. Okay, because the question has already stated that N is a unit vector. Okay, so no reason that you cannot recognize that the magnitude of N is 1. Okay, or in the second line, you could have recognized that the unit vector of N is simply N. Okay, so the correct final answer that you should be giving is simply b minus a dot n. Now, another observation I would like to state is that uh, there are some people who have omitted the modulus or you had the modulus at the start and for some reason it disappeared uh, a few steps later. I have no idea why. This seems to be a recurring issue throughout all the questions. Okay, later on when we have an angle question, okay, you're supposed to have the modulus and people are also omitting it. Okay, so please be very clear when you need the modulus and when you don't need the modulus. 
okay and all this information can be found from your lecture notes okay so really please take the effort to go back and refer if you're not sure okay please do not play a guessing game now let's move on to part two okay so now you're given a third plane p3 which is parallel parallel to p2 such that p2 is equidistant between p1 and p3 okay so now the situation is we have three planes in this manner okay so p1 p2 and p3 okay and we know that points a and b lie on p1 and p2 respectively okay so there are two approaches to find the equation of p3 okay the first of which is to find a third point that lies on p3 right so there are some people who in trying to do this okay you look you you try to find the fourth perpendicular of a onto p2 okay and then you use ratio theorem to extend the fourth perpendicular down okay so you multiply say if this was the point n then you multiply vector a n by 2 okay so there is really no need to do this okay what we can also see is that if i use the points a and b okay and i extend out such that i have a point c okay where a c is twice of a b okay then automatically c must be on p3 okay this is due to similar triangles okay so method one Okay, which we find a point on P3. Okay, so in this method, right, uh, I can use, actually I can straight away use the ratio theorem. Okay, so I see that, uh, let C be such that B is the midpoint of AC. Okay, so ratio theorem, ratio theorem tells me that OB is OA plus OC whole thing divided by 2. Okay, so from here, let's substitute the small letter vectors in. Okay, so if you work this through step by step, You should see that uh, vector OC is equals to 2B minus 8. Okay, so therefore now we can conclude P3 has equation R dot N equals to 2B minus A dot N. Okay, so this is our method one. Okay, now method two, which is a bit tougher okay is to compare the distances okay so what we can see here is that uh, our D okay remember that the equation or the distances between the two planes okay so if you have two parallel planes Okay, and let's say they are parallel. Okay, so the first one maybe is r dot n equals d1. Okay, second one is r dot n equals to d2. Okay, then uh, there's a formula in the appendix of your notes. Okay, that says that the distance here, okay, would be d1 minus d2 whole thing divided by the magnitude of n. Okay, so some of you use this. Okay, so then you had observed, right, if you go back to the diagram, Okay, my P1 is R dot N equals to A dot N. My P2 is R dot N equals to B dot N. And my P3 is R dot N equals to D. Okay, so you use this idea here. Okay, and then you say something like this. So A dot N minus B dot N over magnitude of N. Okay, is equals to 
B dot N minus capital D, okay, over infinity of N. Okay, now, uh, but not many of you were successful in using this approach to solve the question. Okay, uh, the, the most common problem was simply dropping the modulus right after this step. Okay, so then that lead to two groups of people, one who got lucky, okay, and managed to get an answer, or the other one who got unlucky and got D to be A dot N. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's, let's just cancel off the denominator first. Okay, so when I deal with modulus, right, you need to be careful, okay, and not just consider one case, okay, because if modulus x equals to y, or modulus x equals to modulus y, then x equals to y or x equals to negative y, okay, one of these two cases can happen, okay, so you need to consider both cases, okay. So case one, let's say we look at case one where we have a dot n minus b dot n equals b dot n minus d. Okay, this gives us d equals to 2b dot n minus a dot n. Okay, which can be factorized into the form 2b minus a dot n and we see that this is consistent with the answer we have obtained in method one. Okay, so this case looks good. Now let us consider what's the other case. Okay, so case two. Okay, perhaps instead a dot n minus b dot n is equals to the negative of b dot n minus d. Okay, now uh, if you simplify this properly, okay, you get d to be a dot n. Okay, but this case means, this case will lead us to conclude that p3 is r dot n equals to a dot n, which is not quite possible because this is already e the equation of p1. Okay, so unless we are saying that p3 is the same plane as p1, okay, otherwise this case cannot be possible. Okay, so we will make a statement here. We say that we reject case 2 because p1 and p2 are or rather p1 and p3 are distinct planes. Okay, so our conclusion is only case one can happen. Okay, so therefore p3 has equation r dot n equals to 2b minus a dot n. Okay, moving on to question two. Okay, so for the line L1 and line L2, uh, we need to find the vector equations. Okay, so for L1, let us first rewrite the Cartesian, Cartesian form into a standard form. Okay, so just in case you're not aware, okay, this form is the Cartesian form. Okay, so by standard form, I mean to say I want to write into the form x minus a1 over m1 equals to x minus a2 over m2 equals to, uh, sorry, uh, not x minus a2, rather y minus a2. Okay, over z minus a3 over m3. Okay, then once you can get this standard form, okay, the vector equation, okay, becomes just a reading exercise. So you take a1, a2, a3. This becomes the position vector of your fixed point on the line. Okay, plus lambda, m1, m2, m3. Okay, now, uh, perhaps it's timely for me to remind everyone that you need to put the tilde for the R. You need to state the range of values for the parameter. Okay, many of you got penalized, in fact, quite heavily, heavily for some of you because you either didn't include the tilde for R or you excluded the domain or the range of values for, R, uh, for lambda. Okay, which I think I have already mentioned quite a number of times that you need to do both of them. Okay, so some other errors I I see. Okay, people writing for some. Okay, or not understanding a question and telling me things like A, B equals to. No, it's not A, B equals to. Okay, you write line A, B colon. Okay, if you if this is the line A, B, la, that is. Okay, so really please, you know, uh, really use the correct notation. Okay, when writing your answers. Okay, if not, you are penalized for no good reason at all. All right. Okay, so now let's convert. Okay, so 
as I mentioned, I want to convert this into standard form. So for 2 minus y, okay, I want to put the y in front, right? Let's look here. I want to put the y in front. So let's just flip the 2 around. So I get y minus 2. Then I just simply divide by negative 1. Okay, so this now becomes my m2. Okay, and then finally, minus z. How do I write minus z to uh, z minus a3 over m? Okay, you simply just write as z minus 0 divided by negative 1. Okay, so from here, now we can see that L1, okay, see how I write, uh, L1 colon, okay, and it's not L1 equals. You cannot equate the L1 to its own equation, all right? You need to write L1 colon, R tilde, okay? Please don't omit any of this. Don't omit, okay? Really don't omit, okay? So equals to... Okay, so let's draw out the a1, a2, a3. Okay, so that in this case will be 1, 2, 0. Okay, then for the direction vector, it will be 1, negative 1, negative 1. Okay, and really please be careful when you're copying down the numbers. Okay, because some of you didn't copy down one of the negative signs. Okay, which is a, which proved fatal lah. Okay, for the next few parts. Okay, and your domain, or rather your range, your range of R, or your range of lambda needs to be stated. Okay. Okay, then L2. L2 is just uh, writing down. Okay, and we need to use another symbol. Okay. All right, now for part two, Okay, show that the lines L1 and L2 intersect. May I encourage everyone to now highlight this word? Show that. Show that. Okay, I know in my lessons I've mentioned before that if I'm just asking you to find the point of intersection, you really don't have to go through every single step in the working for showing whether uh, the lines are intersecting parallel or skew. Okay, but now in this case, it is show that. Right, so the word shows means you still need to show every single step of the algebraic working. Okay, so let's go through the process again. Okay, so if we uh, equate okay, the right-hand side of the equations of L1 and L2, okay, uh, we will have 1 plus lambda, 2 minus lambda, negative lambda equals to negative 2 minus 3 mu, 1 plus mu, 5 mu. Okay, then next thing you need to do is to separate into the i, j, and k components. So we have 1 plus lambda equals negative 2 minus 3 mu. 2 minus lambda equals 1 plus mu. Okay, negative lambda equals to 5 mu. Okay, so these are equations 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so now like I said, okay, you have to uh, show all your working. Okay, so you need to solve two of them simultaneously first. Okay. So let's say I concentrate my attention on equations 1 and 2. Okay, right, so uh, one quick way, right, is to add equations 1 to 2 together. Okay, this will give us negative uh, 2 mu to be 4, and therefore mu is negative 2. Okay, now I will substitute this value of mu into one of the equations, okay? And the one of the equations that you should substitute in must either be 1 or 2. You have to keep within the two equations that you are currently considering, okay? Because, so, so why am I emphasizing this now is because I noticed there were some people who still at this point in time decided to substitute into the final equation that we not yet we have yet to consider okay i have no idea why because this is exactly what i said not to do okay so 
leave that to the last, okay, to your check. Okay, at the same time, you still have to find the value of lambda. Some of you just stop at finding the value of mu or only finding, finding the value of lambda without finding mu. Okay, so sub mu equals to negative 2. Let's say we sub into equation 2. Okay, so we have 2 minus lambda equals to 1 plus negative 2. Okay, this gives us lambda equals to 3. Okay, ah, now you need to check. Okay, and how do you check? Okay, so substituting mu equals to negative 2 and lambda equals to 3 into the final equation yet to be considered. Start with writing one side. Okay, so no people or no one should be writing this. Okay. Okay, I missed out a 7 plus. Okay, give me a moment. Okay, so that there should be a 7 plus here. Okay, a 7 plus here. Okay, so nobody should be telling me something like this. Okay, no, you don't suck in both sides together or at the same time. Do it one at a time, okay? So left-hand side of equation 3 is negative 3. Right-hand side of 3 is uh, 7 plus 5 times negative 2, which is also negative 3, okay? From here, you should write that this is equal to the left-hand side of 3, okay? Then now, uh, can you truly convince me that therefore L1 and L2 intersect? Okay, at a point. Okay, so please follow this manner of working. Okay, now uh, this reminds me, okay, you do not have to show that the lines are not parallel. Okay, because uh, that's only when I need to show that the lines are skew, right? Because in the process of working out your values, you realize that there will only be one pair of values for lambda and mu, which will fulfill this equation or all three equations, okay? So from here, it is already telling me or telling us that there will only be one power intersection, okay? You do not need to worry about the cases that they are skew or they are parallel lines, all right? Okay, now we need to find the coordinates of E, right? So let us substitute in. Okay, so let's say we substitute lambda equals to 3 into equation of L1, okay? Now observe how I write this. I write vector OE, okay? I do not write E equals to, okay? You cannot write a point equals to a vector, please. You write a vector equals to a vector, okay? So 1 plus 3, 2 minus 3, and negative 3, okay? Uh, here, some people also made some ar arithmetic errors. Uh, please really go and double check your working. You should be double checking your working before you submit your assignment. Okay, and not that when I mark and then I give back, okay, then you realize there's an error. Okay, the, the reason why this is important is because through practicing your checking skills, you become fluent at it. It will help you greatly when we come to your promotional exams and the end your prelims and A-levels. So really, please spend this extra effort. I know it takes time, okay? It will take less time as time progress if you make this a habit, okay? Okay, and then we are not done, okay? Question has asked for the coordinates of E. Okay, so you cannot stop here, okay? You must write one more line. E is the point or the coordinates of E are coordinates S plural R, okay? And I should not write, or I should not see people writing coordinates of E equals to. It is a very non-rigorous way of writing things, okay? So just simply say E is the point for negative one, negative three. Next, let us find the acute angles between L1 and L2, okay? Uh, so this is a very, or at least the first 
part of this question is a very straightforward question, which people are not doing well because they do not bother to check the notes and see that for acute angle between lines, I need to put a modulus in the formula. Okay, we are no longer in vectors one. So, uh, and this is not to say that every time now you put modulus, okay, but the fact of the matter is you need to be clear for what kind of situations do we need to put a modulus, for what kind of situations we do not have to. Okay, when I, in fact, one very telltale sign, right, is that I've already used the word acute here. Okay, so really please be familiar with what is in your notes and with what we have discussed in the lessons. Okay, you're just wasting marks really for no good reason at all. Okay, so cosine theta equals to the modulus. Please put the modulus, okay? Then you take the dot product of the two direction vectors and the direction vectors only, okay, not the whole line. Okay, and then you divide by the magnitudes, okay? So I leave, your, leave it to you to work out the magnitudes, but they are square root 35 and square root 3. Okay, so this is equal to 9 over square root 35, square root 3. Okay, you don't have to rationalize this because uh, the question did not require cosine theta as a final answer. Okay, but you will just need this value. Lah, okay, Okay, then uh, next, to find sine theta, you use Pythagoras theorem or you use trigonal identity, right? Okay, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals to 1. Okay, so there were a lot of you who, or there were some of you at least. Lah, huh? You drew the triangle, you did your working here in the triangle. Okay, no, because it show that. So please put all the working in your algebraic working. Don't leave it in the diagram. Some more it is in pencil. Pencil work is not graded. Okay, for algebraic working like at least. Huh? Okay, for graphs you use pencil of course. Okay, so what you want to say okay is you write uh, so sine theta okay is equals to so you are doing your Pythagoras at the top perhaps okay then just do this can okay then divided by square root 105 okay so this will lead us to square root 21 over square root 105. <coughs> then you see that the two have a common factor, right, of 3. Okay, my mistake, numerator should be square root 24. Okay, so there's, the, there's still a common factor of 3. Okay, so now it becomes square root of 8 over 35. Okay. And, and now in this case, you need to rationalize, okay? And because anyway, uh, you need to show that, right? So uh, in the, oh, you don't have to rationalize, okay? You need to show that it's two square root two over square root 35, okay? I think this is sufficient working. Okay, then the next part, okay, uh, is hence. So those of you who use projection method or the usual methods to find the shortest distances, sorry, again, you're not allowed to, okay? I think some of you know that you need to do a hands, but you cannot see how to do it, okay? So let's go through that. Okay, so the situation now is this. We have a point, A. Okay, once again, observe how I label the point, okay? I label using coordinates, not the vectors. Okay, then now I have point E. Right, which we have obtained from the previous part to be the intersection between lines L1 and L2. Okay, so this is L1, which has direction vector 1, negative 1, negative 1. Okay, my, L, my L2 is uh, okay, the L2 is not relevant. Okay, but in any case, okay, I want to find this distance. Oh yes, L2 is relevant. Okay, so L2 passes through both E and A. This is my L2. Okay, and from this part, we observe that this angle here is theta. <coughs> okay, so now we see that uh, D, okay, using trigonometry, okay, uh, sine theta, okay, opposite over 
hypotenuse. Okay, so sine theta is actually equals to d divided by the length of AE. Okay, so this tells us that to link the two, we need to first find the length of AE. Okay, so AE vector AE is 4 negative 1 negative 3 minus negative 2 1 7 okay which gives us 6 negative 2 negative 10 all right so the length of AE okay and we need to use exact forms huh? okay once it's show question you should use exact forms okay This is square root 140. Okay, so now we can make use of our motivation to find AE, okay, the trigonometry. Okay, so I see that sine theta, okay, or in other words, 2 square root 2 over 30, square root 35 is equals to D divided by square root 140. Okay, so D is thus square root 140 multiplied by 2 square root 2 over square root 35. Okay, and this is equals to 4 square root 2. Okay, so those of you who left the answer as 2 square root 8, this further simplify to 4 square root 2. Okay, we try to factor out the largest possible square factor that is still present in the set. Okay, yeah, so your final answer should be 4 square root 2. Okay, question three, I think we have gone through such problems several times. Okay, the only difference and the point here that is not familiar to you is now you have to work in terms of an unknown Q. Lah. Okay, otherwise, more or less, the process is the same. Okay, but once again, uh, it's not done very well. So let's talk about this. Okay, so method one. Okay, let's use the wave without projection first. So in other words, intersection. Okay, uh, firstly, uh, we will need to work out the scalar product form. Uh, okay, so it's, it's like a reading off exercise. P1 is R dot 110 equals to 4. P2 is R dot 32 negative 5 equals to 7. Okay, so A to P1. Okay, I only need the side view for P1. Okay, so uh, A has coordinates 2Q02. Okay, so now let N be the foot of perpendicular and please spell out the word perpendicular, okay? of point A on to P1. Okay, so don't just say let N be the fourth perpendicular. Fourth perpendicular of what? Of what on to what? Okay, please be very precise in your definitions. All right. Okay, so uh, line AN, okay, and not, okay, some things that is not, okay, is not AN vector, uh, vector, okay? Line AN colon, okay, R equals to 2Q02 plus lambda. Okay, so the direction vector of this line is the normal vector to P1. Okay, which is 110. Okay, please state the domain. Okay, you hear me keep saying domain is just another way of saying range. Lah. Okay, you learn more of this in the topic of functions. What exactly is the difference between the two? Okay, so the domain of values for lambda. Okay, so now here you don't write for sum. Okay, because I am writing the equation of the line which contains all the points on the line. Okay, at most you can write for lambda. Now I will accept that, right? But you shouldn't write for sum. Okay, only in the next step. Okay, then you say since n lies on this line. Okay, consequently, vector O n equals to this. Okay, and now this is when you say for sum, because now in this step, 
we are looking only at one point. Okay, so please show an appreciation for the difference between the two scenarios when you need to write comma lambda in R, when you write for sum lambda in R. Okay, and the solution to this, uh, maybe you find it difficult to understand. Okay, the solution is not escaping from it, avoiding it, and not writing it at all. Okay, please, you need to write, huh? Okay, next, since n lies on P1. Okay, I know that the position vector of n must therefore fulfill the equation of P1. Okay, so now we can substitute our given form. Okay, now evaluate the scalar product. Okay, and please be very careful with your evaluation. Some of you gave me 2 times 0 is 2. 2 times 0 is 0. Alright, okay, then now you simplify. Okay, so 2 lambda equals 4 minus 2 q. Okay, so lambda is 2 minus q. Okay, now you are to put this in. Okay, into our expression for O n. So therefore, O n equals to 2 plus uh, lambda. So lambda is 2 minus q. Oh, sorry, 2 q plus lambda. Okay, then second component, J component is lambda, which is 2 minus Q. Last component is 2. Okay, so your position vector of N is 2 plus Q, 2 minus Q, 2. Okay, and we are not done because the question once again has asked for the coordinates of the point. Okay, so N is the point. 2 plus q, comma, 2 minus q, comma, 2. Alright? Okay, so now let us use the method of projection, okay, to solve this problem. Okay, the way of writing uh, the point you have observed that lies on the plane is very poorly done. Okay, you, 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 I think you find it very awkward to write. Okay, so very simple. Okay, uh, just need to say that, okay, since, for example, you use 4, 0, 0. Then you just say, since 4 plus 0 is 4. Okay, the point, give you a name. B with coordinates. 4, 0, 0. Lies on P1. That's it. Okay, because some of you resort to saying 4, then bracket 4, 0, 0, right vector, then it's wrong again, right? Okay, so it's so just a very simple kind of task. Okay, don't need to over complicate the matters. Okay, so now you draw a diagram. Okay, what we, are, what we want to do now is projection, of course, right? So I'll take vector A, B. Okay, and it's at vector A, B, not vector B, A. Okay, so N, which I have assumed, which I have defined already in method one, so I won't do it again. <coughs> okay, so A, N is vector A, B projected onto A, N, onto the normal vector. Okay, so we need to work out what's vector AB, of course. So vector AB is uh, 4 minus 2Q, 0, negative 2. Okay, so after evaluating the dot product, you have 4 minus 2Q, and the rest of which is 0 already. Okay. Uh. Okay, next. I find it very horrendous uh, that people are writing this. Please, okay. If you write 2 minus Q110 like what I have just done, then you are telling me this. You are telling me the number 2. 2. Scalar. Q110 vector. Okay, you tell me. You tell me. How does this work out? How does this work out? Okay, I know some of you 
Okay, you have this bad habit of omitting brackets. But please, this is so serious. <laughs> Don't you see it's very serious, okay? Uh, now you are saying number minus vector, you know. Hello? Okay, so please, uh, your omission of brackets really have to go, okay? This bad habit they've taken from secondary school or whatever, please throw away. And I'm very sure your secondary school teacher and your junior high teacher have told you many times. Your brackets needs to be there, it needs to be there. Okay, there are no two ways about it. So, sorry, uh, I have deducted one mark for these people because this is simply too much already. Okay, uh, it's not a presentation error anymore. It's a mathematical coherence issue. Okay, so sorry. Okay, so next, from here, now we can say ON. Okay, so those of you who have made a mistake with the projection direction, maybe you thought AN is BA.110, then the next step, you'll be wrong. Lah. Okay, so make sure your directions are correct. So ON is OA plus AN, okay, and not OB. Some people use 400 plus AN. Hello, please check your diagram. Ah. Okay, so this is 2Q02. Plus bracket, ah, bracket, okay, 2Q110. Don't omit the brackets anyhow. Okay, so 2Q plus 2 minus Q. 2 minus Q and 2. Okay, which will lead you to the same answer as in method 1. Okay, again, answer in coordinates form. Okay, yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, I've changed this part to 4 marks. Huh? Okay, then I changed part 2 to 3 marks. Okay, because I felt this part required more working. Huh? Okay. Okay, next part two. Okay, so now uh, we need to work out the mirror image of A in C1. Okay, so you already have the four perpendicular, so we're going to use that. Okay, so first let us define. Oh no, don't need to define. B is the mirror image. Okay, sorry. Okay, straight away use ratio theorem. Don't need to what? Uh, AB is 2 times AN, then OA plus AB. Okay, first few times in vectors 1, I close one eye, I say, okay, you're not used to this. Okay, it's okay. But now, there must come in time, okay, please use the faster methods. You are just wasting time, okay, really. Then you are the one to get this advantage. Okay, so by ratio theorem, straight away, ratio theorem, huh? ON is OA plus OB, whole thing divided by 2. Okay, then now you make OB the subject. Okay, can you see now it's just a plug. Plug can play, right? Directly straight away, put in. Don't need to do all your waste time algebra, vector algebra. Okay, very waste time, huh? Okay, arithmetic also, please check. Okay, cannot tell me you made mistake. You know, it's assignment, it's not test, huh? You need to check your working, you need to check your assignment before you submit to me. Okay, uh, so 4, 4 minus 2Q, 2. Okay, and we don't need this as a final answer. What we want to see is that if B lies on P2, find the value of Q. Okay, so since, so for B to lie on P2, okay, the position vector of B must fulfill the equation of P2. Okay, so you now you put in. Okay, evaluate the scalar product. Okay, so we now have 4Q equals to 12 plus 8 minus 10. So that is 10. 10 minus 7 is 3. So Q is 3 quarter. Or 0 0.75. Okay, next. Part 3. P1 and P2 intersect in a line L. Find a vector equation of L. 
So all you need to do is you just put okay into the GC X plus Y plus zero Z. Okay, equals to four and three X plus two Y minus five Z equals to seven. Okay, use the simultaneous equation solver. Okay, there's no need to do the full algebraic working. There are some of you who do the algebraic method. Okay, question never say find exact. Okay, question never say showing all your working. Question never say use a non calculator method. Question never say use the algebraic method. Straight away use graphing calculator. Use simultaneous equation solver. You don't have time in exam to waste like that. All right. Okay, but that being said, you you did the full working in the assignment. You also didn't really waste time. Lah. Okay, it's good practice for you. At least you know how to do it. Okay, so good for you. Okay, but in exam, please uh, know what you should do. Lah. All right. Okay, then. Ah, like I, okay, so, so uh, just like in question two, part one, where you can get the correct form, but because you never write tilde, you never write lambda, in, uh, or you write L equals two. Uh. Here, one mark only. Sorry, you write any of these, uh, no mark. Okay, so I don't pity people who don't pay attention. As simple as that. You jolly well write L, R equals to R tilde. There's nothing to stubborn about this, actually. Like, you see small letters, just write tilde. Okay, I don't understand why people still don't want to write the tilde. Just write the tilde, all right? Okay, then. R tilde equals to use the calculator negative one five zero plus lambda. Okay, can I use lambda? So I use uh let's say I use theta. Theta also can. Oh, uh, don't like theta. Use some other value. Like this lah. All right. Then those of you who do algebraic working, you see, ah yeah, your answer don't match the GC. Uh, okay. That's because you should let z equals zero. Okay, in your algebraic working, there's one method where you let x equals zero, y equals zero, or z equals zero, right? You should let z equals zero. Okay, uh, so it's on you lah. Huh? I've told you before in class, right? You what you should do? You should let z equals zero. Okay. Okay, and then this is the part that has baffled many of you. Okay, but I can tell you that yeah, once you draw the diagram, all will be clear, and all will be enlightened. Okay, so, uh. What do you need to do? Given that the three planes have no point in common, let's say I draw a diagram. Lah, okay, I just draw a simple diagram. Okay, now I have two planes already, right? And then they intersect at a line, right? What was the equation of this line? Uh, this one. So the thing is this lah, okay. Let's just put things into focus. I have a third plane coming in. Okay, maybe it might look like this. Now, can you tell me, right? In relation to L. In relation to L. If the three planes are going to have a common point somewhere. Where must the common point be? What does it mean by common point? Common point means this point is common to all three planes. It lies on all three planes. Okay? So, assuming that there is a point, there was a point that lies on all three planes, it must at least first lie on P1 and P2. Am I right to say that? Right? It must lie on P1 and P2 first, right? If it doesn't already lie on P1 and P2, how, how can you expect it to lie on the third plane as well? Okay, or how can you expect it to be even a point that's common to all three things? Okay, so that's the crux of solving this problem. Okay, that's for you to see that for any point that must be common to the three planes, it must lie on L. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Once you can see this, then now this problem now condenses to a relationship between line and plane problem. Okay. So if the three planes have no point in common, they have no common point in the three planes, that can only mean one thing. That can only mean that your L cannot intersect P1 
three. Okay, reason is once L intersects P3 somewhere, that somewhere it will be a point that is common to the three things, right? Because if there is a point that lies on L and P3, okay, the point being on L will automatically also be on P1 and P2. Okay, so now we come to this golden interpretation. L cannot intersect P3. So now what are the conditions for the line? not to be intersecting the plane. There is only one possible such scenario. The line is parallel to this plane. Okay, now, so now it comes down to, do you recall what are the conditions required for the L to be, uh, L to be parallel to the plane? Okay, so the two conditions are number one, the direction vector of L must be perpendicular to the normal vector of the plane, which is in this case, lambda 0, 1. <coughs> uh, no, there is no negative sign on the 1. Okay, sorry. Okay, so this is perpendicular to lambda 0, 1. In other words, the dot product must be 0. Okay, so phi lambda plus 1 equals 0. So lambda must therefore be negative 1 phi. Uh, that's how you do it. Okay, so it's not very challenging. It's the understanding the problem is the challenging part. Okay, number 2. No point on L can lie on P3. In particular, the point with coordinates negative 1, 5, 0 does not lie on P3. Once it does, all hell breaks loose, right? Because then your line gets pushed down to the plane and then you will fall on the plane entirely. Okay, so therefore, negative 1, 5, 0 dot Lambda 0, 1 cannot be mu. Okay, and this is where the unfortunate thing happens. Actually, there were many of you who knew exactly what to do. You could tell me that lambda equals negative 1, 5, 1 phi, but your arithmetic is so bad. Okay, you wrote negative lambda, okay, not equals to mu, and then you tell me that, oh, mu not equals to negative 1 phi. Then my response is, Hello, your lambda is what? Negative 1 fifth. So why is your negative of negative 1 fifth still negative 1 fifth? What is the negative of negative 1 fifth? It's 1 fifth. It's not negative 1 fifth. Okay, people? Uh, I don't know, maybe you were very tired already because this was the end of the assignment. But I hold firm to what I said. This is an assignment. This is not a timed assessment. Please make it a habit to check through, check through all your answers, okay? And it's not equals to. Okay, so these are the two things that you can say about the values of lambda and mu, okay? And that's the end of the discussion for the assignment part one.